Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your coffee. Now it's time for a dialogue with the European Coordinator for RTMS on Work Plan and the Executive Director of the European Union Agency for Railways. And Carlo, you will uh, moderate this panel, so I'll leave the floor to you. Thank you very much, Indra. Thank you very much for the introduction. I think we have uh, Matthias Rute with us, the European Coordinator for the RTMS. Good morning, Matthias. Welcome, and uh, we have also with us Joseph Doppelbauer, the Executive Director of the European Union Agency for Railways. Good morning, Joseph. How are you doing? Good morning, Carlo. I am fine, uh, sitting here in sunny Valenciennes, and uh, I'm excited to be a part of your Innovation Days uh, Shift Array. Thank you very much for being with us. We had to change a bit the schedule in a few times, and I'm really happy that you made both of you today. Um, maybe uh, we would like to run uh, this, uh, this uh, session uh, for around half an hour. Uh, the first part, uh, we'll have an introduction from uh, Matthias about uh, the annual plan of the European coordinators. And after that, we will have also uh, an introduction by Joseph about the, world, uh, the new role of the agencies and how it's going. And after that, we'll have a dialogue between us based on uh, the, 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 what we know about the evolution of the uh, railway system and the, the future expectation that we have. But first of all, Matthias, the floor is yours to present the annual role plan. Please, go ahead. Thank you very much, Carlo. And uh, I will uh, give you a little bit of an introduction to the work plan, which uh, I published uh, in June of this year. Uh, and first of all, thank you to Josef, but also to you, Carlo, for all the inputs that you provided for that work, work plan, because uh, this work plan is actually based on a number of meetings and interviews and discussions uh, with what I consider to be the major stakeholders in terms of the RTMS. Now, uh, in reality, uh, my conclusion, my conclusion in this work plan is that Whereas we were still discussing the question of the if we should actually go ERTMS uh, in the past, and this was uh, the rather Herculean work of Carl Wink uh, to get, convince everybody that we needed ERTMS. Uh, now it's more a question of the, the when and how in terms of ERTMS. Um, so it's no longer if, but when and how. And uh, if I look at the meetings that I've had in the last few weeks and months as well with a number of member states, we have actually an acceleration in terms of ERTMS deployment and planning of ERTMS. Um, and with quite a number of member states, we are now in a situation where we can say it is not the 2050 deadline of the trans-European networks, but it is a 2040 deadline that they're working to in terms of having a, a complete network, ERTMS network. Uh, so we have acceleration on the side of the member states, and this is my major message. We need to accelerate ERTMS deployment. Now, uh, in as much as the specifics of my work plan are concerned, um, my role as a coordinator to a certain extent is to be a watchdog or a sheepdog. I uh, uh, bring everybody together and bite the ankles if they're not uh, uh, running ahead uh, uh, quickly enough. Um, and at the same time, my role is a go between between all the different stakeholders. Um, and I can see that in as much as the trackside deployment of ERTMS is concerned, that we now have some 6,000 kilometers. I know that another 6,000 kilometers is contracted. And we have uh, an intermediate goal of uh, some 15,000 kilometers, so 3,000 are missing, by 2023 in the European Deployment Plan for ERTMS. Um, as a European coordinator, obviously, I focus very much on corridors. But uh, if you want to think uh, ERTMS as a system uh, which will allow us to, to operate the European single rail area, and the one element which I forgot to mention at the beginning, Joseph, and you will forget me, uh, uh, the big change is obviously that we have ERA and the responsibility of ERA in terms of systems authority there as well. 
Um, but if we want to think uh, ERTMS, we need to think ERTMS as a network. So we need also to concentrate on the nodes, on obviously the cross-border uh, connections, but also on the connections with the terminals. Uh, and we have this network thinking more and more also on the level of the member states. I've been also consulting to see a little bit whether COVID has had an impact. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that um, with a few exceptions, a lot of uh, infrastructure managers have saying, okay, there may have been a few weeks in terms of uh, delay, sometimes a few months, but in, in general terms, uh, they are very confident that the investment will still take place. Um, my second message is we need to have a European strategy in as much as phasing out class B systems. Uh, at the moment, we have a little bit of an anarchy uh, in the sense that each member state, each infrastructure manager can decide uh, by itself whether class B systems are decommissioned. Some uh, are immediately decommissioning the class B systems once they have installed the ETMS. Some are letting it run parallel, um, hoping that they will be phasing it out. Uh, but we don't really have clear deadlines. And this, in reality, is a big problem, especially for the railway undertakings, because they need, to a certain extent, uh, to be fit for a situation when they can run on the network only with ERTMS only. By the way, we're also doing a study uh, in terms of looking at uh, how we can perhaps uh, already access corridors with uh, ERTMS plus one class B system. My third message is, and this is where we have a real problem, we have at the moment something like 3,700 vehicles equipped with ERTMS. Joseph, you will perhaps uh, add to that because you, you are in the process of authorizing uh, uh, these. But uh, uh, to a certain extent, uh, we were very much reckoning with the new build in terms of uh, ERTMS. But if I look at the 5,000 uh, locomotives and vehicles which were uh, uh, brought into the market in the, over the last years, of the 5,000, only 900 are actually ERTMS equipped. So the exceptions which we allow in the legislation are much bigger than the rule. And we need to think about that. Um, so we need uh, an onboard strategy because by um, 2030, uh, if we look at the high bound in terms of our calculations, we need something like 35,000 vehicles uh, equipped with the ATMS. At the moment, we're, as I said, at 3,700. So we have a steep order in terms of either new build or retrofitting or upgrading uh, in front of us. Fourth message is ERTMS is a large European industrial program, uh, a European industrial program, which actually also is a worldwide program. And is a, it, it, it is a standard which is followed and used uh, in a lot of uh, non-EU member states, um, obviously inside Europe, uh, Norway, Switzerland, UK, uh, but if you go outside, uh, there's a strong discussion also in the context of the ASEAN, but also in India in terms of ERTMS. So to a certain extent, uh, we have uh, a good European product. Um, it's, it's the gold standard, if I can put it that way, uh, in terms of signaling systems. Uh, but uh, we now need to make sure that we show on the European Union level that we, we can actually manage the transition uh, and the migration uh, in a big way. We have money for that. Uh, we will have the recovery uh, and resilience programs of the different member states. And a lot of uh, uh, infrastructure managers are uh, telling me that they are actually trying to get uh, a share of the money also to do perhaps faster ERTMS deployment. Uh, but we need to use this wisely. We will also have the Connecting Europe facility. We will have the cohesion fund and we can we'll probably be discussing all these matters uh, a little bit more. But the large industrial program that we have costed at the moment of being something like 110 billion in terms of deployment, both on board and uh, track side, if we include also uh, the changes of interlockings in there. 
My last message is we need to prepare the future. We need to prepare the future because if you look at uh, what EITMS stands for, uh, it is a European rail traffic management system. At the moment, we are concentrating very much on the signaling uh, and uh, I'm quite sure that Joseph will say a lot uh, uh, on, on, on that as well. Uh, but we need to make sure that we come back to the original idea of having a rail traffic management system. And I was listening with great interest to the discussion that you were having on freight, rail freight this morning, uh, where ETCS and ERTMS uh, appeared as one of the elements. Obviously, it's a means uh, in terms of making a more efficient rail system. Um, and in order to do so, um, we have in the past been trying to chart the way uh, on the future developments, uh, for instance, with uh, a paper which uh, was done in 2015 between the stakeholders and under the aegis of uh, the European Rail uh, Agency, EITMS long-term perspectives. Uh, we've done memorandums of understanding, but in reality we have, if I can put it that way, a little bit of a... Uh, I wouldn't call it an anarchy, but we have a lot of different initiatives which are happening at the moment in terms of reflecting on the future system, which is why I'm so happy that uh, we are now talking about creating a kind of what I would call a clearinghouse, a clearinghouse in terms of the future vision of uh, the evolution of the ATMS with a systems pillar uh, in shift to rail. Um, and there I want to emphasize one point which I think is very important and which uh, we need to integrate from the very, very beginning. It has to be embedded in terms of trying to see what we do in the future. And that is we always need when we are thinking about new technologies, innovations, also think about the migration and transition strategy. So that's all I wanted to say. You find a lot more elements in the work plan. I was already much too long, uh, but I hope I have set the scene. Thanks a lot, Carlo and Josef. Thank you very much, Matthias. I really appreciate it. I think you have set the scene perfectly. And effectively, I think you also you make a perfect handover with uh, Joseph. Uh, Joseph, effectively, Matthias already uh, uh, opened uh, the door for your intervention. He spoke about the system authority role of the agency, but also the new role you have since uh, June last year uh, in terms also on the vehicle. We have only 10% of the vehicle in Europe uh, at the moment uh, that are uh, fit with the RTMS. This will have implication on the onboard strategy, but also the pressure on the supply industry to meet the expectation. Uh, can you maybe share with, with us your views in all these aspects and the relation with the uh, annual plan of, the, uh, of Matthias as uh, European uh, coordinator for ERTMS? Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Carlo. And indeed, Matthias has uh, perfectly set the scene for my intervention. As Matthias has said, we need to manage the evolution and the transition in a dynamic system that is living. And that is the role of the system authority. We are managing the specification. We are managing the evolution of the specification, in particular of ERTMS. And since June 2019, we are also an authorizing entity where we authorize the vehicle with their respective onboard unit and this is the perfect opportunity for us to verify that indeed the systems are fully compliant with the specification. Matthias has strongly emphasized the importance of the deployment of ERTMS, the importance of an onboard strategy and he has also given us the impressive figure that until 2030, we should install more than 30,000 vehicles. And that has to be taken in comparison to what we have done as authorizing entity under the force railway package since June 2019. So far, we have authorized around 12,000 vehicles. However, out of the 12,000 vehicles, more than 9,000 are wagons. And uh, I would guess that we are somewhere around 1,000, 1,500 locomotives in uh, slightly more than one year. Meaning uh, 
30,000 in 10 years would mean that uh, around 3,000 per year on average should come to us. So it will be a challenge for the industry and it will still be a challenge also for us as the system authority. There is another aspect and Matthias has also alluded to it, which is the extension of ERTMS to a rail traffic management system. That of course requires further data integration across the European countries. And that also is the basis for what is clearly needed, a future pan-European traffic and capacity management. Now, coming back to the European integration, ERTMS is a truly European project which moves forward the evolution, not only of the railway network, but also it's a project for the cohesion of Europe because it brings together the member states. Now, what is very important is that we make sure that the European railway network remains coherent because currently we see a gap between countries that are already investing heavily in new technologies and countries that are still fighting with the basic infrastructure. Now, shift the rail and digital and in particular ERTMS as the vector of a digital railway can play an important role to ensure the coherence of the European railway network to bring Europe closer together and as European Union Agency for Rail, we are very happy to play an important role in this process. We are uh, com having complementing the set of, uh, of the scene by, by Matthias. I continue with you, if you allow me, uh, because uh, Matthias introduced the concept of the system pillar on which we are working together with Matthias and the Commission uh, on, on uh, and he called it, uh, in a perfect way, the clearing house. Uh, and uh, clearly, we believe a lot in the system pillar uh, because we, le we expect to have the sector together uh, to ensure, as Matthias said, not only uh, the future uh, rail uh, operation concept, and, but also focusing on migration and transition because this is one of the key elements that sometimes become the obstacle to the uh, uh, the, the, the innovation process. In many cases also, I heard the sector talking about stability versus innovation. And the two words clearly are quite difficult to bring them together. Uh, which is your views on how we can look at somehow keeping some stability, because clearly it makes sense, there are legacy investment done, with, uh, and especially in the railway system, but we need to be capable to innovate because uh, we have major acceleration. Can you share it with us? No, absolutely, Carlo. And uh, for me, the conflict between uh, stability or standardization and innovation is a virtual one. Because firstly, I believe specifically in a network like rail, because we are not in consumer products that are independent, we are operating a network, a system where every component depends on some other components, it's important to have rules and to have a standard and that these rules are stable. But at the same time, you can only innovate when you start from a stable basis. And we need a controlled evolution, but we need an evolution. So therefore, we need the system authority ourselves, but and now we come to the clearinghouse idea of Matthias, we all should evolve in the same direction. And evolving in the same direction and evolving quickly in the same direction means that the sector works together, the sector works efficiently together, the sector harmonizes the approach, but the other important idea that is related to the system pillar is that the solutions are validated, meaning that in the context of cooperation, in the context of working together, 
the ideas are already scrutinized and only those concepts that demonstrate both customer value but also commercial value those ideas are then moved forward and then are elevated to the next evolution of the standard of the European TSIs and the basis also for our authorization. So it's a very important coordination, but also acceleration and absolutely necessary in order to make railways really the transport mode of the 21st century. Joseph, but I would like to also to uh, uh, ask a similar question to Matthias because with uh, Matthias uh, we shared uh, many years in uh, other sector in mobility and transport where we have looked together at the aspects of uh, system pillar, migration process and transition. Uh, how you see uh, uh, similar processes, Matthias, uh, in the context of railway? So as, uh, as uh, I think uh, Joseph said clearly, in reality, uh, stability, meaning uh, definition of clear basis and standards is essential to ensure the evolution of the system. Uh, but we need to also to be careful that uh, this happens and is not driven only by technology, but really by, as uh, um, uh, Joseph said, uh, by on the vision that we would like to see. Uh, which is your, your position from this point of view? Because you, you will be paramount in ensuring that after, as you said, the member states will start to act on these type of things also. Um. Well, if I may, um, uh, picking up on Joseph and uh, the, the, to a certain extent, the uh, just juxtaposition of uh, stability and innovation. Um, in reality, in the rail sector, the way I have uh, been learning uh, about this also in the last uh, couple of years, uh, we are coming from a system which was extremely hardware based and uh, a system which to a certain extent uh, had made very bad experiences in terms of innovation because uh, investments uh, were invalidated, uh, hardware needed to be changed, uh, huge costs uh, were incurred and because of that there's a reticence to a certain extent, uh, a quite an understandable reticence um, to grasp uh, innovation uh, because uh, the huge costs potentially involved with that. And I think uh, this is what we have to try and do. You know, I have a very modest role as I, I'm an individual and uh, uh, go between what Josef uh, uh, and Carlo, you have a, a lot, much bigger operation. Um, we have a big role to play in terms of comforting those who want to invest in ERTMS uh, that this is not going to be sunk investment. And uh, in reality, there are two buzzwords floating around at the moment. One is uh, the modularity, and the other one is uh, software. Uh, both uh, are nice, and uh, sometimes we have the uh, impression that we are all alluding to something like an iPhone or uh, an iPad. Uh, but in reality, uh, if you look at the number, the market, uh, and the numbers involved, uh, the costs are, are very, very different than, uh, than in a mass market like that. But still, we, uh, uh, we, we need to a certain extent to make sure that um, innovation uh, can happen, can happen uh, without uh, putting into an impossible situation those who are early investors. Um, and uh, some of it is clearly uh, now the debate that we are having on the future uh, radio communication system. Uh, some of it is uh, the debate that we're having about uh, train positioning, whether it's satellite or uh, other forms, uh, uh, about digital coupling. Um, all this debate always needs to look, and this is the, the major message I'm trying to give, and I think this is what the systems pillar, bringing together all the stakeholders should also be doing, is looking at the transition in terms of making sure that certain innovation, because the investment was little beforehand, can perhaps come more quickly uh, because to a certain extent, uh, certain things obviously necessarily become obsolete. Um, but if the cost is not that high, it's different to when we're talking about high cost and then we need longer transition uh, periods and migration strategies. 
And reflecting on that, every time we're talking about an innovation, uh, what does this mean in terms of transition and, 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 and migration, I think is a very important element. Matthias, uh, we have also a question from the audience. It's, uh, it's linking on what you just said. And he said, uh, well, maybe we should have also the commission with us, uh, but uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you, you, you can absolutely uh, answer from this point of view, together with Joseph. Uh, the retrofitting of rolling stock seems to be a major challenge for the rollout of ERTMS. Uh, how we will support, uh, uh, how will EU support the investments in rolling stock? I think this is something that we are looking at uh, for many years. Uh, and as you said, the migration plan is fundamental because we need to preserve on one side the, the legacy, but on the other side, we, we need to introduce. And uh, uh, we have always the combination of the uh, first mover advantage, but also the cost that they sustain. And we have a different type of experience in Europe. Well, um, first of all, I always hasten to add, although I have a, have a past history which uh, obviously points in a different direction, that I'm not the European Commission as such, but I'm now the go-between between between all the different uh, uh, stakeholders. Um, But having said that, uh, you will find uh, on the website of the Commission of DG Move uh, a recent study in terms of uh, a European uh, deployment strategy and financing strategy made by the deployment management team which to a certain extent complements my work plan uh, uh, where I, 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 I put this forward. The idea being that uh, to a certain extent, clearly uh, because the major advantages of ERTMS deployment accrue on the side of the infrastructure manager, but a lot of costs accrues on the side of uh, uh, the railway undertakings, we need a strategy of public funding. Now, public funding uh, can be done in in different ways, and we've been working in the last few uh, months also with colleagues uh, in the competition directorate on that. Uh, They can be done uh, through state aid. Um, I have great hopes that uh, some member states will also, in the recovery and resilience programs that they come forward, will be putting forward schemes in terms of retrofitting, but also in terms of scrapping. Uh, because in sometimes uh, if the locomotives are too old, uh, uh, it would be probably better to, to do have a scrapping scheme with then ERTMS and the new locomotives than uh, trying to do a retrofitting, which is sometimes very expensive. So that's one element. Second element is clearly the Connecting Europe facility. And we have uh, launched a call, um, uh, thanks also sort of uh, the work I did together with, uh, uh, with the, the colleagues in DG Move and in INEA, uh, where we have uh, actually, where we are financing the prototypes, because that's the first thing that one has to do, one has to make sure that the prototypes are being financed. And altogether, I think if I look at the last uh, call, uh, we have something like uh, prototypes for at least 2,000 locomotives, uh, which are now being worked on uh, in terms of uh, making sure that we have get the pipeline, the project pipeline. So public money, national, regional, European, um, the European Investment Bank, the spending facility, all these are elements which come together in terms of supporting uh, financially retrofitting. Uh, At the same time, uh, we also have, I think, uh, redefined and helped to redefine the boundary conditions in order to make this possible. Thank you, Matthias. We are almost at the end. We take maybe a couple of minutes more for this, but uh, a last question to uh, Joseph to to conclude this this session is, uh, Joseph, which, how you see the role in really in one sentence of uh, ERA inside the system, future system pillar in this clearing house? And I will ask also Indra to join me in the final conclusion. Joseph. Well, uh, firstly, we have the very formal role as the system authority. So we are actually receiving the outputs and uh, we are expecting from the system pillar harmonized and validated solutions that we can quickly 
promote to the level of European standards, which then can be quickly rolled out. And just to come back to what Matthias mentioned, uh, the model of rarity will be a key element because we need to ensure if we have to change certain aspects of the system, like the radio, that we don't have to change all the rest. And this unfortunately has been the case for a very long time, but now when we have close to 4,000 locomotives and soon much more locomotives, if we need to change 30,000 locomotives every time a piece of technology becomes obsolete, it is not manageable. So system pillar is a very important contribution and a very important input to the role and the work of the agency as system authority for EATMS. Thank you very much. That was a very clear discussion. For me, the key takeaways, Matthias, that was that we are no longer discussing if we need RTMS, but how, and so we need to accelerate the process. I understood also the plea of Joseph that the European railway network should stay coherent to cope with the futures. We should move in the same direction. And last but not least, I understand also that RTMS is the gold standard as a worldwide program, but we have to show that we can handle it, this handle this future, and that's what we are going to do. Thank you very much, Joseph and Matthias. Thank you very much, Carlo. Thank you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope that you can enjoy your lunch now. And please notice that the webinar with Monique van Wortel on the role of rail in member states' innovation strategies will start at 1.30. As for me, I would like to invite you to join us again for the live signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between Shift to Rail and the Canadian Urban Transit Research and Innovation Consortium at 2.30. See you back later.